fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship a high. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hey, Silver. Hurry! Sheriff Drew of Three Forks, a short, stocky man, stood on tiptoe to tack a handbill on the bulletin board outside his office. Oh, carnation, take it. There goes the tack. Uh, let me tack that up for you, Sheriff. I got a longer reach than you have. Well, thanks, strangers. Mighty kind of you here. Yeah, right. Hey, give me the hammer and tack. Uh, gladly. Have it up in a jerk. Uh, <laughs> and Bill on an hombre called Lanky Rabbit, huh? That's right. They say he's a mighty mean hombre. Leads an outlaw gang. Yeah, let's see. Lanky Rabbit. Six feet two, slim build, weighed about 165. Curly brown hair, blue eyes. Jagged scar on left wrist. Wanted for armed robbery. Reward. <laughs> That hombre must be almost as tall and skinny as I am, sure. Uh, taller and lankier, I'd say, mister. Thanks for tacking that up for me. Well, that's all right. Here, here's the hammer and tack. Thank you. Hey, don't mention it. My uh, friends are waiting at the hitch rack. I'll see you again, Sheriff. So long. Adios, mister. Well, friendly sort of fellow. wonder who he is. <laughs> If, if he had a little more meat on him, he'd be right nice looking with that curly brown hair. Cur tall, lanky, curly brown hair. And he has a scar on the left wrist. That's him, Lanky Radford. Hey, hey, come back here! Lanky and his two companions expertly covered their tracks and rode to their hideout a few miles back in the hills, where five more members of Lanky's gang were waiting. The men were amused when told what Lanky had done. <laughs> oh, that must have been a sight. Oh, yes. <laughs> but Lanky shouldn't take chances. Yeah. You gotta know people, that's all. You don't expect me to do the things I do, so I get away with them. Yeah, but everybody will be on the lookout for you in Three Forks now, Lanky. So they'll all expect me to stay away. But I'll fool them. I'll go right back there tonight. Right. Well, you local, they'll spot you right away. I doubt it. Wait till I go in the back room. When I come out, you'll see how I'm going to fool them in town. Ten minutes later, Lanky came out of the back room. He wore a reversed collar and long black frock coat. 
His usually curly hair was slicked down with oil and topped with a black hat. We're jumping catfish. Look at Lanky. Looks like a preacher. What do you plan to do this time, Lanky? Well, it's just about noon. I'll ride over to Slick Falls, ten miles south of here. I'll send a telegram to the banker, Mr. Hodge, in Three Forks, saying I'll arrive on the six o'clock stage and to prepare the meeting house for services tonight at eight. Huh? Yeah, why? We don't say I learned in town that the banker has asked for a preacher to be sent from Austin. He got the meeting house built and ready for the new preacher. Well, what's the idea? Why do you... Now, have... before I start for Slick Falls, I'll tell you all just what to do so our timing will be right. First of all, Porky, you'll be waiting at the meeting house for me. Right. Trigger, you'll yeah. take the others to the back of the bank after the meeting starts. That afternoon, Banker Hodge in Three Forks received a telegram. Later, Lanky arrived on the stage and was met by Mr. Hodge. The meeting got underway promptly. The meeting house was filled to capacity, and all the men had left their guns at the door. A hush fell over the congregation as Lanky stepped to the platform. Friends, it's most gratifying to see the meeting house filled. <clears throat> now, uh, I always have the collection taken up before the services begin, so the congregation isn't disturbed later when the thoughts are on higher things. Now, I'll ask my, my good friend, Mr. Hodge, and the gentleman standing with him at the door to take up the collection. Porky and the banker passed hats among the congregation. Then, after handing the offering to Lanky on the platform, they returned to the door where the men had removed their guns. Then Lanky again spoke from the platform. Now, good people, I want everyone to kneel for one minute in silent prayer before I start the sermon. <clears throat> Here come the sheriff and his deputy. Uh-oh. Now, uh, don't be concerned. I'm sure they'll cooperate and leave their guns with us. Evening, Mr. Hodge. The meeting started? Um, yes, sir. I'm uh, proud to say we have a very unusual parson. He requested that all guns be left here at the door, sir. Mm. Well, all right. Yeah. Uh, here's my gun, yes, Thank you. Yeah. Here's mine. Yes. What's the parson doing? He's picking up something. Yes, the congregation is in silent prayer. Parson Lanky is picking up the hats containing the collection money. The sheriff stepped inside the doorway and watched as Lanky emptied the collection into a canvas sack. Then Lanky stood up and his eyes met those of the sheriff. Mm, that parson looks familiar. Lanky turned quickly and walked into the crude vestry room off the platform. And Porky, unnoticed, left the meeting house hurriedly. A moment later, a man ran up the steps and called to the sheriff. Sheriff, come quick! What? The gang broke into the bank. They're just leaving. Great day. The bank, it's been robbed. Give me my gun belt. Hurry. This is the gentleman who is... Where is he? He had your gun belt. Oh, doggone that preacher. Now it comes to me. Parson Lanky. He's Lanky Radford. Give me a gun. Any gun. Hey, all you men in there. That man was the real parson. He's Lanky Radford. His gang just robbed the bank. Come on, get your gun. Stories of Lanky's prankish escapades spread throughout the Southwest and reached the ears of the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who were riding the trail not far from Three Forks. People in last town talk about outlaw leader who make believe him parson. Rob Bank with gang Three Forks two nights ago. Mm, that sounds very much like the type of thing Lanky Radford would do, Tonto. Ah, them say him Lanky Radford. Him fool sheriff twice. Same day. Lanky is clever and dangerous. While we're in this territory, we'll try to get a line on Lanky and his men. Come on, get him up, stop. In their hideout in the hills, Lanky and his men were still chuckling over the way they tricked the sheriff and townspeople of three forts. <laughs> I reckon Sheriff Drew was fit to be tired when he realized who I was. <laughs> and he didn't even have his gun belt on. <laughs> yeah, there's another trick I'm going to pull on Sheriff Drew that'll get us plenty more cash. And I figure after that, Sheriff Drew will have to turn in his badge. 
<laughs> the people of Three Forks will remember Lanky Radford for a long time to come before I'm finished. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. It would take a whole shelf full of spices and special flavorings if your mom started out to make a honey spice on her own. And lots of extra work, too. But with Betty Crocker's wonderful honey spice cake mix, everything she needs is right there in the package, all blended and ready to go. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs. Mmm, and what a cake! Why, a great big Betty Crocker honey spice cake disappears in nothing flat around our house. You just can't stop eating it. And I know once your family finds out how good Betty Crocker honey spice cake is, they'll make quick work of everyone your mom turns out. But she won't mind. They're quick work for her, too. So easy to bake. And they always turn out perfect. Betty Crocker promises that. So have Mom put Betty Crocker honey spice cake on her grocery list today, huh? You'll be glad she did. And so will your whole family. Now to continue... In spite of objections from his men, Lanky Radford at the cabin hideout planned one more trick in Three Forks before leaving the territory. Porky asked, Lanky, how do you figure on fooling the sheriff a third time and getting away with it? Like Trigger said, don't press your luck too close. That's right. Now listen, more of the stage going east stops at Three Forks. Yeah. Yeah. We'll stop the stage before it reaches town. Tie and gag the driver and guard and bring him to this cabin and leave me here. Yeah, I don't say it. I'll smear my face with dirt and my clothes with dust. Then wear the driver's badge and hat. You, Trigger, will ride as guard. When I'm slumped down on the seat, nobody will notice my height and build. Yeah, we'll stop in town, pick up the shipment and the extra guards. Then the rest of the gang will hold us up after we leave Three Forks. Well, I'll be doggone. You have nerve enough to make it work at that. Yeah. Now listen, Porky. Be sure to bring my horse and trigger so that we can make our getaway after the last holdup. Yeah, right. What'll we do with the two extra guards we pick up in town? You know, they usually ride in the coach. We'll tie them, turn the stage around, and start it back toward town. Then we'll leave the territory. The next morning, a few miles from town and not far from the gang's hideout, the first part of Lanky's plan was accomplished. The stage driver and the guard were tied to the horses Lanky and Trigger had ridden and taken away by Porky and the rest of the gang. Lanky, his face smeared with dirt and wearing dust-covered clothes and the driver's weather-beaten sombrero, climbed onto the seat of the stage with Trigger. Come on, get it! Ha! Get it! Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto spent the early part of the morning searching the hills. As the two men rode along a ridge trail, Tonto suddenly called a halt. Oh, Scott. Oh, oh, sir. Oh. Oh. What is it, Tonto? I think we hear someone call. We listen. Well, someone's in trouble. Those cries seem to come from down in that hollow. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, the call. A few moments later, the masked man and Indian sighted a cabin hidden in a grove of trees. Help! 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 voice come from that cabin. Yes, the cabin is well hidden down here. Hold it, hold it. Easy, 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 fellow. The masked man and Indian slowly eased the door open. Then they entered. The driver, who had worked his gag loose, said... <sighs> Two more of the outlaw gang, eh? No, we're not outlaws. But to mash him, Lone Ranger. We come to help. The Lone Ranger? Uh, I've heard about you. Oh, thank heaven you found us. We'll untie them, Tonto. Uh, Quickly, they removed the gag from the guard and untied both men, who told them briefly what had happened and what the outlaws planned to do. We haven't much time. You men ride double with us as far as the edge of town. We'll drop you there. You go to the sheriff's office. In some way, we'll try to stop lanking these men from leaving town until you bring help. Let's go quickly. All right. A 
few minutes after the stage left Three Forks carrying the gold shipment and with the sheriff and deputy riding as extra guards, the two men who were brought to town by the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced breathlessly into the cafe. Hey, hey where's the sheriff? Going on the stage with the deputy as extra guards. Why? Holy smoke. Lanky Radford's driving that stage. Great day. Come on, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> Meantime, after leaving the driver and guard at the edge of town, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw the stage in the distance, heading away from town on the east trail. Oh, 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 oh. Kimusabi, there goes stage. It already leaves town. They must stop it before it reaches the place where the rest of the gang is waiting. Ah, but two extra guards ride in coach, driver say. It's risky. Them plenty. We'll take the risk. We'll take a shortcut over the ridge and stop the stage before it enters the valley. Lanky and Trigger on the seat. The stage rumbled toward the rendezvous with the gang. Eat up, sir. Eat up. Oh. Just before the stage reached the entrance to the valley, Trigger pointed and exclaimed. Hey, Lanky, look, coming down the slope of that ridge. Huh? Mass owl hooting an engine. Looks like they're trying to cut us off. Yeah, we got to get rid of them quick. Hey, Sheriff. Here come a couple of outlaws. We'll have to fight them off. I thunder we'll soon show them. Breakneck speed, the masked man and Indian rode at an angle down the slope to intercept the stage. Concentrate on the two men on the seat, Tonto. Uh -huh. Lanky was driving the horses at top speed, and the stagecoach bounced and swayed over the rock trail, spoiling their aim as the four men fired at the oncoming riders. I'm bouncing around so much I can't get a line on him, Lanky. When they get real close, we'll try to plug him. Go! Oh! Holy smoke, trigger fell off. Get up there! Come on! Here they come. Go! Oh! Lanky, oh! wounded in the wrist, dropped his gun in the reins. A moment later, another bullet caught him in the shoulder. Oh! And the outlaw leader slumped down on the seat. The horses, without a driver, raced onward in a frenzy of fear. Inside the coach, the sheriff and the deputy realized what had happened. Sheriff, the guard fell off and the driver's wounded. The horses are running wild. Yeah, I know. Here come the outlaws. I'll get a chance to plug them, maybe. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Don't shoot yet. They're going to try to stop the runaway horses. Let them do it or we'll be wrecked. Once they do, we'll get the drop on them. The Lone Ranger and Toto swung in on either side of the stagecoach horses, then moved forward to the head of the team. Oh, hold on. Oh, 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 easy. Oh, oh. The masked man and Indian each grabbed a bridle of the two lead horses and brought the stage to a stop. Hold over, hold up, hold up. We got both of you covered. Freeze or we'll fill you with lead. We're getting out of here. Sheriff, we're not outlaws. We know you are. I've been fooled enough. By thunder, we'll... Now listen we'll... a moment. The driver on the seat is the outlaw leader, Lanky Radford. Lanky Radford? See for yourself. He slumped down the seat and apparently unconscious. He and the gunman with him plan to lead you into a holdup by his gang in the valley. Deputy, watch these two. I'll take a look at that driver. I got him covered. Jumping catfish, the masked man's right. He is Lanky Radford, but I don't savvy. Quickly, the Lone Ranger explained. Then the sheriff spoke. But you and, and, and that mask, why should you... Well, him, Lone Ranger. What? We search Hill for Radford gang. You're the Lone Ranger? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon you are at that, and he must be the Indian Tonto I've heard about. Uh -huh. Sheriff, I suggest we put Lanky inside the coach with you and your deputy. I'll wear his hat and dusty coat and take his place with Tonto on the seat. Tonto will borrow your deputy's hat. Uh, then what? We'll tie our horses behind the stage, then we'll drive on. I've heard Lanky had eight in his gang, including himself. That means there are six men waiting in the valley. We four should be a match for them, because we'll be taking them by surprise. Anything you say, mister, I'll give my eye teeth to capture Lanky's gang. Let's go. <laughs> Later in the valley, Porky and the others saw the stage approaching and started out to intercept it. Get up there! Get up. Now remember, be careful you don't shoot Lanky or Trigger. When we get close, aim your shots into the coast. As the six men started toward the stage, which was still some distance away, the Lone Ranger quickly pulled it to a stop. Hold, hold there, hold. He's up, hold. Come on, Tonto, before they're close enough to know what's going on. Uh, the two men hurriedly led Silver and Scout to the far side of the stage, then mounted, and waited until the outlaws were close. 
Porky and the others, surprised by the actions of the men who had been on the stage seat, pulled to a halt. Hey, Lanky, what's the idea? Open fire. Uh Open fire. Two of the outlaws fell wounded. The other four returned the fire, then turned as if to escape to the slope. But they were surprised and dismayed to see the posse, which had followed the stage, riding in to cut them off. Hey, look, the posse! They're moving in behind them! Use your gun! Caught between the guns of the men at the coach and the posse, the remaining four men realized something had gone wrong and that they had no chance. They soon surrendered. We give up! We're dropping our guns! By golly, we got him. Yeah, and here comes a man's man, Ancient. Oh, 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 mister, you sure turned the tables on him. Hey, what about the sheriff and his deputy? Here they come on foot. Man, I, I reckon you all know by now how Lanky Radford fooled me again. But thanks to the masked man and his Indian friend, we have Lanky and his gang. We found one of them wounded back on the trail. One of the men stayed with him. Lanky is wounded and unconscious in the coach. We'll give him and the others first aid, then take him back to town. If Todd and I can give further oh, help, we I... have everything under control now. Thanks. In that case, we'll leave. Adios, Sheriff. Adios, and many thanks, Mister. Adios, everyone. Adios. 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 The driver and guard told us those two hombres are friends, but just who are they, and why does one of them wear a mask, Sheriff? Lanky Radford may have fooled me more than once, but he never fooled that mask man. Never. And neither will any other crook for that matter. You see, that mask man is none other than the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special...